Next up for Howl It For An Hour is something a little bit unorthodox here. We don't really have a game per se, but we do have a piece of software. This is Pixel Game Maker MV. I believe this thing costs like $80 on Steam. Somebody can look this up for me. It's like actually kind of expensive, but it looked really interesting. So let's see here. This is, as it may sound, a Pixel Game Maker. I think it's trying to ape off of RPG Maker a little bit. And as some of you know, I actually am an RPG Maker developer. So let's see if I can figure this thing out. Um, I don't know. Again, look it up. I, I, it's a, it's, it's apparently a fairly robust package, so maybe I understand it, but we'll see. So, would you like to view the tutorial? Uh, sure. Let's look at the tutorial. Why not? Thank you. The project is already open. Close it before starting. All right. The tutorial proceeds despite action not performing as intended. Just like stop the tutorial from help and start the tutorial over from the beginning. All right. I will create project. Yes. Click whatever game charms. Twish game. It will be a Twish game. Yes. Uh, Twish game. There we go. <laughs> Click next. You guys can't see this cursor. It's going... Wow, this cur this tutorial thing is... Uh, did you see that? It's like flying all over the place. Alright, click OK. I'm going to do a side view. So you can do like an RPG. Top view. Or you can do side view and do like a platformer. Let's do a side view. 71.99 euros. Yeah, that's about what I thought. I think that's about 80 USD then. All right, saving the new project, not responding. Good, good. <laughs> Create game maps on this page called scene found on this screen. Okay. You can create multiple scenes per game. A single game is made by creating and linking these scenes together. All right. Let's create a new scene. Sure. Click the add scene button. Do I... Is, is, oh, there it is. I found it. You know, I, I, I um, by the way, the box, the window that is open, this is just the default window. So I just was like, all right, you can be the default, you know, like this is the default thing it opens in size. Like this is the default size. So, okay, I'll work with the default size. But clearly I need to make it bigger. So give me a second. Let's, let's make it a bit bigger. I like how it sets a default size and then doesn't work on the default size. That's pretty cute. Oops, wrong way. Oops, right way, I mean. Eh. Eh, window sizing. Always a fun activity. Am I even doing this right? Fuck if I know. That's pretty close. I'll just stretch it from there. There we go. Okay. What does it want me to do? What do what do me to click something? Add scene up here. Okay. Um. Oh, this. Okay. Well, I'm click the add scene. Right. You guys can't see the prompt, but you can maybe see a little bit of the arrow. Uh, once we click the add scene button, all right. Um, hmm. Hmm. Let's change display. Add scene. Found it. All right. Now another menu opens. Whatever. You can see most of it. Um, or can you? Actually, let's see. Yeah, you can see most of it. You can see the important part. Click the change the scene name to scene one. All right. Um. All right. <laughs> sure. Next, click the tile sets plus button. For the pull pull down menu, select scaffold.sf. Okay. Mm -hmm. Click what am I doing? This is a weird tutorial. The next the scaffold that's okay, so I've added a tile set from the looks of it. Alright, scenes are made by arranging tiles and objects found in this window. Okay. First select the tile in the upper left here. Alright. Add to the tile or object the scene. Left click to insert a select tile object in the scene. The black box holds the marks the part of the screen that is actually visible. All right, the black bar extends to the upper left. Ah, I see. If the black bar extends to the upper left, hold down the mouse wheel to move it. All right, and then I, well, so I assume I can like, yeah. Yeah, 
Simple enough. Simple enough. Um, all right. Fill in 0, 9 to 12, 9 with tiles while keeping an eye on the numerical val val values. 0, 9 to 12, 9? Okay, hold on. Let me delete all these. How do I delete them? Probably can just do this then. Okay. Uh, let's see. So, 0, 9 to 12, 9. All right. Let's see. What is the coordinate for that? That would be... Oh, it's basically saying make a pla make a floor. Okay. Let's be fancy. Let's make a cool floor. There. Right click scene one and then set a start scene. All right. Um, start scene. I'm sorry that the, the uh, drop down menus are not visible entirely for you guys, but I'm doing what the tutorial says and what I say out loud. But if you can't see what I'm doing. We've just created a bare minimum environment, it says. Click file slash save project. Sure. A bare minimum environment. That's my favorite type. Click the test play button. All right. So enable automatic save project. Damn. The scene you created show up. And the next scene will be placing a character in the scene. Uh, proceed. Yes. Automatic save when you test run. That's fine. That's understandable. All right. Here's Charm's, here's Charm's Twitch game. That is indeed a scene. Actually, scene community well played. <laughs> Thanks for that. Uh, so what are we doing? It, it, I can't obviously can't play it though. I don't have a character. All right. Did it show up? In the next scene, we'll be placing a character in the scene. Sure. End of tutorial. So how do I do the? How do I do the character? You just said in the next scene we'll be placing a character, and then it's like, well, bye. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, don't worry about it. I'll figure it out from here on my own. Sure. All right. So we have a starting point. That's probably... Okay. How do you place that, though? Ah. Okay. You know, I still haven't figured out how to delete objects. So maybe I'll figure that out now. That's one way to do it. Are these, I don't like I don't like how these flags work. They're a little non-conducive to a grid. Are there multiple tutorials? I mean, let's see. Um, <clears throat> tutorials. Here we go. Oh, okay. Here we are. So let's create a character. Sure. If the tutorial proceeds despite an action not performing as intended, you know, I just realized something. Undo. Yeah, undo is Control Z. All right. There we go. <clears throat> Right, next tutorial. Have you? Yes, I do. I do indeed. Well, the project daily progress of the previous step. I, I mean, okay. I mean, it's still there, but sure. Oh, there's Touche Game. Select it and double click and open. Oh, you want me to select the game? Oh, wow. Okay, so hold on. Let's look at this folder setup for a second. So Touche Game and then Animations, Audio, Cache, Data, Fonts, Icon, Image. JS movies plug in save game project. This is very similar to RPG Maker MV actually in its layout, which probably has something to do with the fact that it's called Pixel Game Maker MV. Um, on that note, uh, Pixel Game Maker is made by Katokawa, which is not the guys that make RPG Maker. RPG Maker is made by, um, it, are they still made by Interbrain? I think they are. So, in other words, they kind of aped the MV thing for their own game. Nothing, nothing really wrong with that, but I'm just pointing it out. Um, all right, starting preparations. We'll create a character and place the scene to see, place the scene we created in step one. All right, click animation. Animation. Oh my! You can register animations as a character and object resources on this page. This trail the weight information in the player folder is displayed. Okay. Items versions in the motion window are emotions that a character can execute. So wait, warp, da slash, shoot, death, disappear, rotate, slash, charge, stand, start, shoot, jump, jump, shoot, dock, truck, shoot, dash, slash, dash, damage, gain, clear, landing, and jump weight. Okay. The motion's direction <clears throat> and the type of animation are registered in direction of frame. What we have opened right now is the motion information for player, weight, weight. 
<clears throat> so let's see. I see. Player, wait to the right for 12 frames. Player, wait to the right for 10 frames. Player, wait to the right for 7 frames. Okay. Adjust direction of frame settings, register in motion to create character animations like this. So you can have multiple idle animations, stuff based on the number of frames that have passed, etc. I appreciate that it tells you both seconds and um, frame, like what, how many frames a second is, basically. Actually, it's zero seconds, twelve frames. I'm not. Hmm. Just wondering about that. Katakawa, you've heard of them. What else have they done? Also, the view below shows a preview of the currently selected motion. Okay. Is it moving though? All right, let's test one out. Find walk. All right. Walk. It's not walking though. It's hard to see it like this. So click this button to remove wall and collision. Uh, remove, uh, wait, what? Do you want me to remove this? Because that would make it easier. Click playback. Click stop. That moves very quickly. All right. Well, the motion will play when the character does the walk command in game. And can we set the walk command to a key so that's it? Yeah, I assume we can. Let's see. It's probably somewhere around here. However, this alone doesn't make for a controllable character that moves left to right of arrow keys. Yeah. You have to register a way to call the animation. Yes, that's. Yeah. Click this button again to restore it to normal. I don't even know what this button does. <laughs> Click objects. All right. It has to load. I, I'm surprised how long it takes to load tabs. <laughs> It's not very efficient. On this page, we'll specify where the animation from before is called. Will be called. Is there something supposed to be here? Add object. Okay. Change the object name to player. Um, all right. I assume you want to select. Does it matter what we choose? All right. Select player weights. All right. Yeah. All right. Done. Done. I did it. There you go. Check off object control by input device. Right, because the wait command would not be controlled by input. It would be controlled by a lack of input. And then click OK. The box is saying wait walk and jump display the action. Yes. Okay, let's see. Oh, okay. So waiting can lead to walk, which it can also lead to a jump. Waiting can also lead to a jump. Because you can jump while waiting or walking. Jumping can lead to waiting as well. Because after you jump, you can just stop doing input, which can lead to waiting. I understand this. All right, let's register. Play an animation to each one of these boxes. Click the waiting box. Right, did it. Box details are shown to the right. If you can't see the box, it's just the, where are you pointing? It's pointing. Okay, literally, this this tutorial prompt is pointed at the chat. It's pointing at Poizaz. <laughs> Wait, I think I skipped something by accident. Oh, you mean this, right? Let me just there. All right. <laughs> uh, okay. So, what do we want to do? Wait is the motion for no input. Select wait for the motions. Okay. Oh, sorry. It's set for wait. <clears throat> Next, click the walk box. Right. Walk is the animation the character moves. Yeah, let's select walk. There we go. Now we click the jump box. And we're going to select jump for this, aren't we? Yep. Pretty straightforward. That's the basic player controls. Next will be lastly we'll we'll adjust will adjusting the link that was created. Okay. Click the link link from jump to waiting. Jump to waiting. There we go. Click the plus button for other condition settings on the right side window. All right. Click page two. Check off contact with slope. All right. Select don't set for set slope contact directions. Oh, oh, I think I understand what I'm doing. Click don't set for slope type. So during context with slope, we're not going to have any unusual interaction with slopes. Is basically what we're saying here. While jumping, I guess while jumping. 
Click any places that are currently and and change them to or. Okay. Ah, so it has condition whether regardless. So basically, if it was an and, then it would have to meet both conditions to trigger. But if it's an or, then it doesn't have to meet both. It just can it can just do one. Um. All right. Click scene. Sure. What are we doing? This is a lot of com this is actually rather complex. I'm not. I'm kind of impressed, but at the same time, it's. I don't know about the layout of this yet. It's kind of a little bit all over the place. Place the character we just created. Click scene one. Click the object tab. Click the object list. Click the player. Click position one eight. Okay. Now we can save this character in the scene. Save. Click the play button. I am in the floor. That because we didn't actually put we didn't put collision on this, did we? <laughs> oh well, well, it does work. Uh, let's see. All right. End of tutorial. All right, tutorial three. Create slopes and tiles. So yeah, we created a scene. I guess that was just background data we created though. But I guess it's perfect for slopes though. Good afternoon to everyone that just joined. I think it's just these actually, but you know, good afternoon. Let's see here. Okay. Yes, we do. I don't need to do this every single time. I already have it open, but okay. All right. Let's create new tile settings. Wait. Hold on. There it is. Okay. Click tile. Um, here? So I think it wants to be hit it here. This screen is, for ba is basically for setting the wall detection for the re image resource register on the resource. Okay. Wall detection refers to settings that allow the player to walk and run to things moving around. It's a test. Let's add collision detection. Select the tile the seventh column to the left, seven from the top. This one? Yep. Uh, when the basic setting is shown, click all walls here. By clicking the area, you can also figure individual walls. Yes, so you can make a one-way wall, for instance, if I turn this off, the player can walk to the right through the tile, but not through the left. If there's a red border on the tile, wall detection is done. Let's add a bump to the map we created in step one. Click scene. I'm really curious how slopes would work, though. Um, click scene one. Yep. Click and select the left, top leftmost tile. Wait, what? Oh, top left. Click 5 a.m. view and make a bump. Make a bump? You mean place it? I'm not entirely sure what it's asking me to do, I'll be honest. Oh, that's zooms. That's good to know. Now we have a bump, do we? What's a bump? Next one, large size of the scene. All right, click the settings button here. Change the scene width from one to two. Okay. Notice the player movement range restriction and the cameras to scene display was range restriction changed? Did it? Um, let me scroll down and see. I mean, that makes sense. Area accessible camera all, area accessible player all. Okay, got it. You can set like screen, screen transitions using this probably. Or you can just have it be one large environment. We'll compensate for the enlargement. <laughs> That's what she said. Uh, we'll change player movement range restriction x value from 312 to 624. Okay. Right, I'm just doubling it. Makes sense. I'll do the same with the camera, probably. Yep. Click OK. The view has been expanded. It has. Now I'll place a slope path on the expanded view. You know what? Hold on a second. Hold on, yo. Let me just... Let me just, uh... Get rid this is just... These are useless tiles. Let me just get rid of them real fast. Place them with these. Just, just to keep it simple. It's gonna look bad, but it doesn't matter. Can I, like... Okay, I have to use the... Alright. 
Let's make a floor real fast. There we go. Uh, now we'll create a place a subpath path in this expanded view. I think if they have the red, that means they have collision, basically, which I, I'm learning now. Okay. Click and drag to select the multiple individual tiles at once. Yes. Start with the six column for the left and then the seven for the top. Click and drag two tiles vertically and three. Wait, what? Sixth column for the left. One, two, three, four, five, six. And seventh from the top. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, yeah, it wants to be just like this. Click the mountain at 13.8. All right. Here we go. The place is done. Set up wall detection for the slope path. Yes, yeah, so let's see how that how does that work. Click others. Um, select place slope. For slopes, you select and oh, you select the start and end point in order. Click the upper left of 13.9. Then click the upper left 14.8. Okay, hold on. Oh, I see. So I'm gonna select like. Wait, what am I doing? So upper left of, and then lower. So upper left of 13.9, upper left of 14.8. I see, I understand. So with slopes, you just directly place them however you want, like this. So you can set it down to the very pixel, which is actually pretty cool. Just like that. Let's make it down to the slope the same way, no problem. I got it, I got it just fine. There we go. Hopefully that actually works correctly. Red equals walls, yes. <laughs> There's no path of the way down, so let's fill it with the up, upper leftmost tile we used in the beginning so the characters fall out. Um, what? Okay, sure. It's like tile. Upper left. You can drag 69 to 25, 9. Oh, right. It wanted me to fill the area I already filled. It's all right. Now you know how to create slopes. Slopes are pretty simple, but I could see messing it up by not quite clicking the box correct. For instance, my two slope lines are actually incorrect. They should be good enough, but they're not actually placed correctly, identically. All right, let's see. Click the, yeah, click the play, check, check and see if it works. It takes a while to load scene, even for something so simple. All right, well, do 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 do. Oh, well, see, you see what I mean? Actually, I know exactly. So I placed the uh, left slope line a little bit higher than the right one, and thanks to that, now we get stuck on it. So I didn't place it just perfectly. So now we get stuck on it. I hope there's a way to do a preset like 45 degree angle that you don't have to worry about. Or like, I hope there's some way to smart set it to like the edge of a sprite because like half of the slope sprite is a slope and half of it's transparent so i wonder if you could like have the slope set it such that it just corresponds with the transparency and just sets it to the edge of the actual sprite i'm sure there's probably a way to do that that would be a good idea at least so yeah i was pixel perfect on the right slope at least <laughs> all right end of the tutorial I should get some music going while we do this, huh? Hold on a sec. Let's put on a little something. I didn't know this thing would be devoid of, devoid of music. Actually, I, I bet the next tutorial step is adding music. Let me check that before I add music with my own. Um, okay, tutorials. When is music? I don't see music here, so you know what? I'll do this. Let's put something on. Let's see. What would be what would be just a nice general thought? You know what? Actually, I'll put on. Uh, just. That would be good. That would be just a good song. Hmm. Something chill. You know what? Nothing says chill like Nifless. There we go.
So, let's do our next tutorial. Pray and connect another scene. Yes. Yes, you're gonna make me open it again. Infinite Blank. I'm sorry that the server is down for this week, actually, for Infinite Blank, because, um... Boyfriend's computer was hosted it. Boyfriend went on trip. Boyfriend brought computer with him because it's a laptop. When he's back, uh, I should have a backup on Tuesday. So yeah. All right. Now let's make a now let's 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 s make a completely new scene and link the scenes together. Okay. To keep the basic settings the same, we'll make the new scene by copying C one, which we created previously. Previously. All right. You light. I have to remember to resub every month. Thank you very much. We have need create a new scene. Click the settings button. Change the scene name to scene two. Yep. Like okay. We'll be connected to scenes, so the player character only needs to be in one of these scenes. All right. While C2 is selected, while C2 is select, select click the object here. The English isn't perfect in this, I noticed. Um, Alright, click object here. Yep. Right click player and delete them. Fuck you, player. Delete. Wait, we'll be deleted. Yes. Your boyfriend's playing, busy playing Uno and won't join games tonight. He's playing Uno tonight? <laughs> He's always playing some like when he's with his family. Also, how you doing, Josh? Sorry, I forgot who you were again. Oh my god, the caval the cavalcade of names I have to remember sometimes. How you doing, Josh? How how's are you are you hanging out with him too or? <laughs> but yeah, he's so he's played Uno. I know he's played a lot of board games lately. That's what he does with his family when he visits them. Apparently. All right, we're gonna do a transition here. On this screen, we'll decide how the scene we've created will be connected. There are two methods to connect screens, screen flow and portal transfers. We're, now we're playing with portals. I just heard Udo. I like Udo. It's, Udo's fun. She wanted to go shopping and they dragged him along. Yeah, he mentioned something about the pray for me and delete my internet history if I don't come back from this. Or something to that effect when he was talking about shopping the other day. <laughs> I don't know why he hates shopping so much. Uh, let's see here. We'll be using portal transfer. Okay. They even offered to kidnap him to rescue him. <laughs> this is fair. Super busy. Well, it's right after Christmas, though. I, I can't really blame him. If I go to a mall, if I go to a busy mall, um, I, I tend to, I have a noise sensitivity issue, so, like, I can't actually block out sounds. Like, most people can block out sounds and listen to the specific sounds. Like, for instance, if they're in a busy environment and they're talking to a friend, they can focus on the friend's conversation and ignore all the conversations going on around them. I can't do that. I have a, I have a mental disability that prevents me from basically blocking out uh, individual sounds. So I hear everything with the same level of focus, I guess you could say. So it just becomes absolutely insane in a busy environment. Malls are pretty bad for that. Click the add portal button. A new portal has been added. Yay, portals! So I'm guessing this is probably a warping between scenes thing. It's probably like, you know, you can make a door and it would be triggered by portals, probably. Alright, let's see. So don't give me tin noy nor just... Yeah. This is why I try to avoid noise a lot of times. I mean, I just struggle navigating around stupid people. There's also the navigation issue of malls, yes. It's usually the voices that get me, though. Because I hear everybody's conversation all at the same time. And I can't not focus on it. Alright, let's see. Portals are a function that links specific positions of the scene together. Yep. Fair enough. Let's see. It's just a warp point. Let's start with settings for portal A. Specify scene 1. Make sure only 1. Specify as 600. Okay. Make sure the Y is 0. Specify X is 24. Specify Y is 216. Sh check off. Check off? Match X direction. Does check off mean to check it or not check it? 
I imagine it says, means to not check it. But it's already not checked, so... Okay. Yeah, I mean, I assume we're going... Unless we're using the same position. You know, there's a red frame being shown in the view on the bottom. If you can't see it, hold down the mouse while we move around. Um, a red frame. I mean... That? Oh, I see. Okay, portal B. Scene 2. Layer 1. I see what we're doing. We're basically, uh... Making it so... Wait, why are we... If we're matching the X and Y... Oh, wait, no, we're not matching the X and Y. Wait, actually, no, we are. But we are matching the X and Y. Wait, hold on a minute. Check off, check off. Wait, 600... Oh, right, position 600, ed edge of the map. Same position, otherwise. Same, same size, just different part... Just the other side of the map, basically. Did he mention he also kill off, killed my Call of Cthulhu character? All he mentioned about Call of Cthulhu was that there was a real struggle and he was surprised they survived or something. Or you guys survived. I'm not really sure what happened with it, though. He also, I, he was kind of throwing shade at the new player, which I assume might be you. I don't know. Like, say about, like, we, we really struggled, we had a new player or something like that. I don't remember exactly what he said, though, so don't take my word at heart. All right, like, let's make sure flip and set for portal B is checked off. I know what we're doing here. We're making it so when you reach the right edge of scene one, you go to the left edge of scene two. Makes sense. Hmm. Okay, off. Click all arrows on the row of the right to make them active. I'm guessing, yeah, I understand. Based on the direction in which you trigger the portal to the right. And then the leftmost arrows here, yep. All right, I understand, I understand. This made sense. Now let's retest. If I delete the blue or red arrows between portals A and B, it can make it impossible to progress. Okay. Yep, works fine. Sounds about right for Kulu through the death. Crash of the car is driving ahead to run from a ghost or something. <laughs> Five, six bad rolls, my bro GM decided the character is dead. <laughs> it's like, I think you're done. <laughs> Sounds like a game Eric would run. Merciless little. <laughs> the merciless little, I mean, he's such a nice DM. No, he's merciless at times. He's absolutely merciless. All right, end of tutorial. Well, we're learning a lot today. We're not going to get through this whole tutorial, but I'm just going to see how much I get through in this, in this hour. Let's change songs. All right, I do. It's gonna make me load it again. It's, it's understandable, I suppose. Enemies. Create enemy is the same as create a player. Click objects, add object. Enemy one. Enemy. Crawling. Enemy group. Okay. We have a robot. I like players. We need to create enemy action programs on our own. It's a little complicated, but we'll set up step by step. Firstly, click action 001. Okay. Well, it's called action 001, but semantics, I suppose. Change the action name to waiting. All right, well. Change the motion to move. All right, basic settings. Oh my. Parameters for this object. This time we'll make sure an enemy is destroyed upon attack, so we'll leave the HP as 1. I'll check temporary invincibility after receiving damage. Okay. So we can just keep shooting it. Also, I'll check object blinks during invincibility. I don't see that, though. I mean, if you'd already turned off the temporary invincibility, I don't think the object blink would really matter, but okay. If you're turning off the effect, then the animation for the effect shouldn't matter. Thanks. This is Niflas music. Niflas is a... Uh, I think he's Norwegian, actually. Niflas is good. Good chill music. 
All right, we're gonna click Action Programs. Let's create a settings that will destroy the enemy once hit by player attack. HP becomes zero. Right click and select Add Action. Uh, where are we adding? Add Action. Here's an action. Change the name to Destroy. Destroy. The story. The story. Change the action to move. Click the other runtime actions button near the bottom. There we go. On the screen, you can decide what kind of action will be taken when this action is reached. Okay. It's time we need to make the enemy disappear. So check off the story object. Oh, when they say check off, they mean to actually check it. Oops. There's a couple things I didn't check earlier, but that's alright. Whatever. I didn't seem to change much, oddly enough. Actually, of course, it seemed redundant, actually. Although I was trying to check off that other time was something that seemed already covered by the warp coordinates, so... Click OK. When the action program is connecting actions together with lines called links will determine character behavior. Let's create a link for Wayne to destroy. Right-click waiting, add link, left-click destroy. There we are. Let's get a new song. We create a link. Let's create a condition for moving and destroy action. All right. Page two. HP is zero. Ah, uh, condition variables. Right. Make sure object's reference is object self. Uh, let me do that again. It is indeed that. We finished setting up so that the enemy's HP comes zero, it's destroyed. Did we? Oh yeah, because it's on the, the link itself. So basically, Wayne state, destroy state, and wow, as we get to that state, we set the variable on the link to indicate HP is zero. The link becomes HP is zero, so when action one leads to HP is zero, it leads to action two. Fair enough. Let's place the enemy we made in the map. Okay. I mean, this, this enemy will do nothing but sit there and die when we shoot it, but that's fine. I don't think it even hurt us. 12 8. Alright. Oh, the enemy's in the scene. It is. Test it. Link X coordinate with the portals was so that you could exit the same height you enter. I guess now you might change height when changing screens. Ah! Oh look, it's bouncy! I pushed it. It is now stuck. Oh, let's come with me. Yeah, yeah, actually that's it. I always spawn at a particular height now because of the setting I didn't do. <clears throat> Which looks a little jank, obviously. We can fix that though, of course. Just need to remember how to do it. Go scenes. And then we go to. Oh shit, I've already forgotten how to do this. Uh, let's see. How do we do warps? Hmm. I don't remember. Was that in resources? No, it wasn't in resources. It was definitely in scenes, wasn't it? RPG stuff is fun. Let's see. Was it others? Here we are, camera. No, wait, no, that's not camera. Not camera. Uh, where was it? See, I've already got him forgotten. I have to say, this interface is quite intimidating. So, portals. Yes, I need to find portals again.
Well, I guess it doesn't matter that much. Oh, wait, let's create an attack. I don't remember either. Yeah, it's it's this. Is, I don't know if I like the interface. It it's definitely got a lot going on though. Not sure I like the interface though. All right, our objective is to make an attack option. Okay. Let's see how this works. I mean, I I did add an action. I think I just added two actions. Whatever, it's fine. Change the name to attack. Can do. What does this do? Okay. Oh, you can change the color to like remember it. That's nice. Slash. We're going to connect from any motion. Right click Wayne, add link. Attack. Check off the following has an input. Yes. When I hear check off, that just sounds like remove the check, like make sure it's off the list, you know? The plus button. Change type of button to X. Gotcha. Hit OK. Hit OK! I, for some reason, the cursor flew to the upper left corner of my monitor. What? Okay. Alright, I'll hit OK though. Leo's these settings to connect the uh, link from the other end. Right click the link and select copy. Jump, pace. Ah, okay. Lock. Pace. Is that confusing enough looking? By pressing X, I will perform attack from other motions. It's current state. The action doesn't go back to other motions from attack. So I'll place a link from attack to waiting. Yes, that's important. Otherwise, it'll look really weird. Like waiting. Alright. Click the plus button for other condition settings. I'm gonna like spread these out a bit. There, now I can actually understand it. I disagree with using X and Z as buttons. I would use. Well, X and Z are fine for keyboard buttons for like normal platformer controls. Good idea, Ultra. It's not pricey, it's insane. Yeah, it's $80, correct? Alright, click the plus button for other condition settings. Right, I did so. Okay, it literally... Oh wait, other condition settings. That is... Wait, what am I supposed to be clicking right now? I kind of missed what I was doing. I want other condition settings, where are those? Shit. I got lost. I don't know which menu I was supposed to be under. Ah, oh, here we go. Made this one? Click page two. Face showing all motion. I really hope I'm on the right link right now. Oh wait, this is the attack to... Wait, which one is this? This is the attack to waiting one I was supposed to be on. Hold on. I think I did that right. <laughs> I didn't really get one time, but trying to do things like make a commander ship or prosper war for sure. Like, here to specifically set malt colonies in a mech suit. So, basically, people that had bad imaginations. <laughs> Alright, so I can now, like, fly. Okay, um. Wait, what button did I set attack to? Click it. Come on. 
Was the player attack emotion it showed? No. What button did this need again? X pressed. Yeah, that's what I thought. I, X does nothing, by the way. So I must have done something wrong. You know, I never remember saying an animation, actually. Hold on a second. Did I actually set it? I didn't set an attack animation, according to this. No, I did. I selected slash. Not set. Takes over emotion. Maybe I need to do that? Didn't tell me to do that, but... Uh, Alright, somebody outside has a motorcycle. I didn't do it either. I'm very confused. Well, let's go through the tutorial again, I guess. You know what? Let's just restart. Let's do this again. I clearly just missed something, right? Change the motion to slash. Yes. Right click waiting. Add link. Left click attack. Fly instrument input. Plus. Okay. It just says to click OK, so... Alright. I click link up, select copy. I click jump. Paste. Pull attack. Lock. Paste link. Attack. I'm pressing the expo... Wait, no, it won't. Oh, that's why I got confused, because it doesn't actually select that by default. Click page two. Check off finished, showing all motion. Okay. Save. Test. Okay, it said press W to attack just now. I'm like, wait a minute, no, what? Let's just hit all the buttons. Wait, what? Oh, I can fly now. <laughs> what? What did I do? I got one attack off. I don't know how I... I don't even know how I'm attacking right now. You... No, I... You, theoretically, I've attacked A press, but A does nothing. Well, how... You know how I'm attacking? I'm pressing S to jump, and sometimes I attack while doing so. S is doing everything, and also makes me fly now. And wiggle. <laughs> I don't know what I did. I really don't know what I did. I literally followed the tutorial, though. I, like, I did that twice just to make sure. This time I got a different result. Here's the thing. A, it says A press, but it doesn't. It doesn't work off that. It should be X anyways. I have a hunch. Attack was never set to S, though. It was set to A in every single example here. Unless, of course... Hold on. Just try to use my Xbox controller, isn't it? 
And yet the keys that I was pressing do actually do- wait. No! Oh. Wait. It technically is using Xbox controllers, but my- here's the thing. My Xbox controller is actually not plugged in right now. I kind of forgot about this. I can plug it in. Oh, and now it works just fine. Now, now there's no issue. It seems like this really needs controller. You know, I bet there is a button that I've set this to on the keyboard that does slash. There it is. I found it. Okay, so it is actually W. So this is the weird shit. So it wanted me to select S is jump and W is attack. Look at your keyboard and realize how awkward that is. W is directly above S. S is jump, then you have to press directly above it to attack. Well, it works though. Somehow I futz through it. Um, you know I'd like though, real fast. I'd like to. Uh, I'd like to be told how to do the warp thing again. I'm just going through the tutorial of this useless seed I don't need. Transitions! Oh! It was there the whole time and I just forgot. I just wanted to, I just wanted to, I was just waiting for it to tell me where to go again. Let's uh, stop tutorial. I don't know how I forgot that. Alright, so all, all we need to do is this. There we go. Speaking of mech RPGs, Carcerus was thinking about writing a Mega Man game at some point. Now if I'm correct, I should actually... Yeah, there. Now the height of the jump is accurate. Between screen transitions. Okay. Up shockwave produced by attacks. Okay. Well, the project day of your progress up to the previous step. Yep. As usual. Alright, option tab. You need to prepare bullets. Okay. Well, can we just slash? Alright. Play animation slash. Slash was added. Making sure the algae is called this place. Oh, I get it. I know what we're doing. Sass animation needs to have a hitbox. That's what we're essentially doing. Change the action name to slash. Check off oh, not affected by grab. Yeah, otherwise it would just fall. <laughs> Can I imagine shooting a gun bullet? You don't have that selected, it just falls to the ground immediately. Uh, right click slash and select copy. Alright. Base action. Select it. Change action name to destroy. Ah, oh, yes, we gotta remove the particle effect, basically. We're gonna select that to right click slash add link. Destroy. Plus button for the condition settings. Here's where the game... Okay, so it, it, it messed up on one part, part where it didn't select a link for me. And but the tutorial just told me to press something while not having the link selected. But I need the link selected. That was kind of the issue earlier. Um, page 2. Check out finish showing all motion. Yep. Okay. Dead. Alright, I did that. Do it again.
Now we create a link to proceed to the next action when a motion display ends. Click the destroy action. Click the other run type actions button near the bottom. We have to make the slash disappear, so destroy objects. Uh, I'll page one then. There it is. Click OK. I, once again, kind of I overshot what it wanted me to do. Let me try that again. OK. Uh, click basic settings. So we can specify your store conditions for an object after it is destroyed, among other things. The default the scene changed. So right now, if we return for a scene, the slash will show again. Let's select none here. One moment, please. There we go. Alright. Now let's so create a tech action that calls the slash for the player. Click the player. Or I'll call the slash animation we created. The slash is a bolt fired. Okay. Bolt shot settings. Okay. Click it. Um, display parent and child relationship. What? It's just a random thing. Alright, uh. Bullet. Was bullet settings tab created? Click bullet settings. No. Oh, there it is. Click the plus button here. The bullet was added. Well, that was simple. Select slash. Now the player fires a bullet, a slash animation will be played. Uh, interval bullets. Interval, uh, interval between bullets. Zero. Okay. Uh, check off no limit. So I can just throw out as many slashes as we want. Shoot in a specified direction. Um, shoot an object's display, yeah, shoot an object's display direction, so whichever direction I face. Right. Select action. Select the attack action. Other runtime actions. Check off fire bullet. Select bullet 001. Select connection point from select connection point. Um, probably the first one. I found something they didn't translate. I wonder what these do. We set things up so that when the player attacks, the bullet is fired. The file slash save object. Alright. Why was that not translated? Alright. We saw. Oh, well, it's gone now. Guess it works. Through walls. I don't like that animation though. It's so it's not very exact, so you can't see the hitbox of it very well. Or the hurt box rather. Um I guess that's that tutorial. Yeah, it did disappear. Right out of sound of the effects. Alright, cool. How much time we got left on this? Two minutes. I don't have time for the tutorial. I think I'll end it there. This is an odd little program. I don't know. This it has a lot of complexity to it. I feel like that the level of detail is really nice. Now keep in mind, I was only going through the- this is only half of the tutorials. Not even half. It's like a little more than a third of the tutorials for the- for the platformer. Tutorials. There's also the- there's also the top-down, the RPG style. Though quite honestly, I'll be quite blunt about this. If you're gonna get an RPG, uh, if you wanna make an RPG, don't spend $80 on Pixel Game Maker MV, unless it's amazing. I haven't gone through this tutorial, so maybe there's something amazing about it. I would just recommend RPG Maker, though. Much more accessible for RPGs. Uh, for a side view game, this might be good. I'm not sure. I've never actually really created. Uh, I know, like, you know, like Game Maker and stuff. There's multiple programs out there, including some free ones, that allow you to create side scrollers and stuff. I've never really messed with those. My brain never really clicked with side scroller stuff. I, for some reason, my brain clicked really well with RPGs, like RPG creation, but. When it came to side scrollers, my brain was always like, ah, too many variables, too many physics. Physics, ah, physics, no. It's like, um, but yeah. Momentum, jump arc, interruptions of animations, etc. I could do some of that in RPG Maker anyways, but yeah. This costs 70 euros, 80 dollars, 80 USD about. 
I'm not sure if that's worth it. I just was doing the tutorial, and the tutorial had showed me that something wasn't translated, which is a little bit... That seems a little sloppy. If you're gonna charge $80 for a product, it shouldn't be sloppy in any regard. And having the, having that, uh... Having that bit of translate, untranslated text, I don't know if that's the only untranslated text in here. There might be other untranslated text. If you see some, that means there might be other bits of text not translated too. And it's fine. This originally started as a Japanese program, I believe. And you can kind of tell based on the Englishiness occasionally in the tutorial, but... Like, yeah, I don't know. This doesn't quite seem worth it. Not at that... But at an $80 price tag, at that point, you would, like, need to fucking... You need to fucking be amazing at that price. And this doesn't come nearly close enough to match that price tag. It seems... I've noticed that game development software tends to be overly expensive. I think that's unreasonable. But RPG Maker is at least a nice, cozy $60 for the latest release while cheaper for the others. Like, at least it's not trying to be an $80 or $100 product, you know? I still think it's a little pricey, the RPG Maker series, but at least it's not unreasonable. This seems unreasonable. Not because of lack of options. It certainly seems to have that in droves, but... Eh. The presentation is a mix of, well, Englishy, untranslated, maybe here and there. Um, but really, I don't like the layout. I'm not sure if this is a good layout or not, though. I'm not the best judge of this. I haven't used Game Maker. I haven't used other engines to create side-scrollers. I can't tell you if this is a good engine or not. Perhaps. But I've given a good hour look at quite a bit of it. So you can judge for yourself, if you think, that it looks good or not. Here's the final boss. You know what would actually be kind of cool, though? I wonder if I can, like... Before we stop... Is there... You know what this needs? You know, every, any, any good game creation tool needs this one specific thing, and I don't know if this has it or not. A test, a, a, a pre-made game that shows you that you can play and enjoy, and then you can go and edit it and see how it all works. That's what every that's what every editor needs. A pre-made game that you can play and then just go and dive into the code and see how it works. That is the best way to learn, I find. Because there you go, we got a nice complete package, and then you can see how it all works. Um. But I don't know if this has that, so that's a shame. Well, perhaps I could look at some Pixel Game Maker games later or something. I think there's some around. But for now, that was Pixel Game Maker MV.